It's Tuesday, it's day 62, and I thought I had everything sorted and ready to go, and then last minute I find myself rushing. So at the moment, I'm trying to find tunes for us to get sorted into our session. Um, so you'll have to bear with me while I chase my tail, and I try and find some tunes that we can actually listen to for the training, because like I was just saying, I thought I had everything boxed off and everything was organized, and I opened my notebook and I realized I hadn't actually written my plan down. I just scribbled it down on my rough worksheets. So I had to uh, last minute um, throw it down in the notebook and then I realized I hadn't got my timer set up and then I realized I hadn't got the tunes on. So I'm trying to do everything at once. You just sit down there, Nick, and you put your shoes on. You get yourself ready, okay? I I'll organize everything. Okay, so today all we need, hello, Carol, how are we? Hey, teens, hello, Susie, how are you? Hey, it's Aoife, how, how's the body after yesterday? Holly McGill, how are we doing, Holly? Good to see you. Hey, Emma. Okay, so today all you need is your bell and your chair, stool, table, bench, whatever it is. Um, and by bell, I mean that in the loosest form possible. Dumbbell, kettlebell, Frankenstein bell, whatever you can make up, which is a weight that you can hold individually. Today is an easy one to follow if yesterday was a hard one to follow. Judging by herself over there, she was completely lost and she just had to rely on her blind faith um, to follow me to get her through the session. Hey Sharon, how are you? Hey Nat, Mark, how are we doing, Mark? Are you really by the sea, Mark? I wanna see a photo of proof to prove that you're by the sea. Um, okay, so all you need today, like I was saying, is a kettlebell, dumbbell, Frankenstein bell, chair, bench, tabletop, whatever it is, and we'll get into our full body workout. So again, it's 13 exercises today. It's, uh, what's the timing? It's three minutes on each exercise, which means it's 39 minutes solid. You only get five second breather. But by breather, I mean it's actually just a transition from one side of the body to the next, okay? So stay with me. We're going to get into our warm-up. So let's get down into a squat. So feet, not, feet nice and wide. And you can probably tell by the way I'm talking. I'm a bit rushed because of uh, trying to organize everything the last minute. I know, excuses. It's still going to be an awesome training session though, right? Here, have you set your watch? Yes. Remember, it's not a session unless it's recorded. Isn't that right? Okay. Feet shoulder width, push the hips back, sit the hips down, push the knees out with the elbows, hold it there for three seconds, and then walk yourself out into the plank position. Hold the plank position for three seconds. Bring your foot forward beside your hand for three seconds. Rotate your arm for three seconds. Bring your arm down, change feet. Hold the foot there for three seconds. Rotate the arm, bring it down, put the foot back, do a push up and then walk yourself back into your squat. Did you get all that? So it's a squat for three, into a plank, foot forward for three, arm rotation for three, changing side, other side, foot forward for three, arm rotation for three, hand down, push up, and then back into your squat for a further three. So we're just bringing everything and mashing it all up into one warm up. So take your time. It's all about slowly moving, mobilizing the joints, getting the blood flowing, getting the cardio system moving, and increasing the metabolic rate, getting the body ready for a training session. Take your time. So we're gonna take a good few seconds working on the warm up. So it's squat to plank, foot forward, Arm rotation, changing sides, foot forward, arm rotation, and before you go back to the plank or the squat, it's a push up. Wow, we'll go one more. Again, with our squat, we're keeping the feet flat on the floor, shoulders are back, chest is out, head is up. So, a lot of you guys are back at work, but there's still a large portion of people who are working from home. So we're keeping these sessions going. And it'll also allow you guys who are working and are watching this on repeat, stand up, who are watching this on repeat to uh, still avail of the session, not live, but pre-recorded. So into our lunges, big stride forward, drop knee, keeping the feet the same width as the hips. The aim is to initiate with the front foot, and drop that back knee all the way down. Very lightly tip the floor. Push through the sole of that front foot and come back up. Big stride forward, plant foot, drop knee, push yourself back up. Keep the stomach tight, keep the shoulders back, keep the chest out. And we're constantly moving, 
slowly and continuously. That's the one. Okay, and the last one we're gonna go into is a rotation on the spine. So you're gonna go into a bent over row, let the arms hang, and then we're gonna rotate the torso as much as possible, twisting through the spine as best we can. Twisting right round, you might get a few clicks and cracks, that's okay, that's normal. Okay, and very slowly, come up out of that rotation. Okay, so here we go. 13 exercises, three minutes on each exercise. 39 minutes total, continuous work, and you're only getting five second retrieves. So in 10 seconds, you're gonna start swinging that kettlebell. It's gonna be with two hands or alternating. Seven seconds, six, five, get your weight. Four, three, two, one. And let's go into your swings. So remember, let's go back to the basics of swings. Shoulders are pinned back at all times throughout the movement. You're aggressively pushing the floor away with the soles of your feet. And at the top of the swing, you're consciously squeezing your stomach and that stops the hips from hyperextending and compromising the lower back. So it's all about the aggression through the soles of the feet. Standing bolt upright to attention, keeping those shoulder blades pinned. 10 seconds, we're gonna get a five second breather and then it's right side only on the swings. Four, three, two, one. Rest five seconds. We're going right side only swings. Three, two, one. Let's go. Drive the floor away. Shoulders back. Head up, stomach tight at the top. And regardless of whether I'm using two hands or one hand, the movement pattern is the exact same. You are driving the floor away, you are maintaining posture, and you are squeezing your stomach to exaggerate that posture at the top. You never let the bell pull you forward. You keep your shoulder blade pinned back at all times, because it's like walking a dog. <laughs> you don't let the dog walk you, you keep in control. It's the exact same. And rest five seconds. We're going to the left side. Three, two, one. Left side swings. Shoulders back, chest out, head up. So we're gonna go back into alternate swings after this, and then it's no more kettlebell swings for the day. 13 exercises. Once we've got all 13 done, that's it. We're done for the day. 17 seconds, and we've got one more round of swings. And again, as we get tired, the body starts to forget, the body starts to look for shortcuts. You gotta stay switched on upstairs and keep focusing on the correct muscles to be used. And rest five seconds. We've one more round. Four, three, two, one. Two hands or alternating hands. It's up to you. If you are doing alternate swings, changing between left and right, you're gonna do the change where you can see the bell. That means in front of the face. You're also capitalizing on the fact that that weight is slightly acting autonomously and it's weightless, which allows you to quickly change hands as opposed to fumbling around down below underneath the legs and there's a chance you may let go. We don't want that. Five seconds and then we're switching to alternate rear lunge snatch. Okay, so the bell goes on the floor. We're gonna snatch the bell off the floor straight up and then into a rear lunge. Down between the feet, change hands, straight up and into a rear lunge. So the hand that is snatching the bell above your head is the same side as the leg that goes behind you. So if I'm snatching up with my left arm, my left leg goes back into a lunge. And I am not um, shirking the snatch lift. I'm completing the snatch lift fully before I go into my rear lunge. I'm just taking very little rest between the two movements. Five seconds, so we're gonna go right side only. Three, two, one. Right side only. Remember, it's all about aggression to the feet, shoulder blades pinned. Let's go. Right side drive up, and then into your rear lunge. And then that bell goes back down, and your right side drives up, and into your rear lunge. And at all times, focus is on the technique. 
and posture before that tempo. So we're really focusing on driving that weight away from the floor. And then that hand steers it above the head. And then that allows you to then drop into your rear lunge with the best posture. Three seconds, two, one, change. Left hand, in through nose, out through mouth. Three, two, one, left side. Drive the floor away, propel that bell above the head, steered by the arms, and then into a rear lunge where we maintain full contact with the sole of the foot in front. And we're pushing that floor away on the snatch and also coming out of the lunge. So whole surface area of the foot is required in order to get whole muscular complement. Five seconds, then we're going back into whew, alternates. And rest change. We're going right, left, right, left, or two hands. Let's go. So it's all the way up, and then it's right leg back and down. And then it's change, drop your hips, drive away from the floor with the soles of the feet, and then into your rear lunge. After this, we're gonna go into clusters. Cluster is a combination between a clean and a thruster. 17 seconds. Remember, keep alternating those hands. 12 seconds, 11, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We're gonna start with the right hand or two hands and you're gonna drive the floor away, clean the belt to your chest, full squat, overhead press. Back to the floor and we go again. So remember with your squat guys, you're dropping through the hips, you keep your knees pushed out, you keep the soles of the feet on the floor, and you maintain posture on the shoulder blades at all times. So drive that floor away with the soles of your feet, capitalize on the energy being dumped into that bell, steer it onto the chest, and then drop into your squat through the hips again. Three, two, one. We're gonna go right side only. In through nose, out through mouth. Let's go. Drop hips, drive floor away, maintain posture, full squat, overhead press. Staying with that right side entirely for the 40 seconds. So remember, you're always exhaling on the exertion. So you're gonna inhale all the way down with the hips. Exhale as you aggressively push the floor away. Inhale as you squat. Exhale as you push the floor away a second time in the same rep. So there's two hip drops in every rep. Seven seconds, six, five, four, three, two, one. Change, left hand. Three, two, one. Let's go. Push floor away, full squat, overhead press. And remember, think of it as two separate movements. You cannot go into the squat until you have fully extended the hips and finished the clean, and then drop the hips back and down again with the weight now on the chest. So this is a cluster. Call the cluster, because it's a combination between a clean and a thruster. Clean is where the bell starts on the floor and finishes on the chest, and the thruster is where it starts on the chest and finishes above the head. And rest. We're back to alternate arms now, or two hands. Three, two, one, let's go. So if you're doing this right, this is literally full body. It's every muscle group in the body, and even brings the chest in to a degree with the overhead press. But you gotta focus on what you're doing. You gotta focus on the hips dropped to generate the power to push the floor away aggressively and therefore allow that energy travel up to the core and out the hands into the bell. Five seconds, we're into alternating wood chops. Two, one, rest. Two hands on the bell, feet hip width and throw it to the left, 
throw it to the right, throw it to the left, throw it to the right. So we're aggressively throwing the hips around. And by throwing the hips, the arms will follow and the arms are refusing to let go of that weight. So therefore, it is generating serious rotational force on the core. And the core's job is actually to stop the bell from moving, not to propel it. Because the hips moving around is what propels it predominantly. And then the core is what puts on the handbrake. Four, three, two, one. Rest five seconds, we're gonna go right hip, left shoulder. Three, two, one, let's go. So we're really focusing on the right hip and then throwing it up and over that left shoulder. And already I can feel serious fatigue coming in on my shoulders and also on my core. So I gotta focus oh, on throwing my core around aggressively and, or my hips around aggressively and then squeezing my stomach muscles to put the brakes on that bell so it doesn't go too far. And I'm rotating up on to the toes on the right foot as my right hip throws around the corner. Think follow through in a golf swing. Three, two, one. I'm now gonna go left hip, right shoulder. Three, two, one. Let's go. Oh. So really throw the hip aggressively. That in turn generates the momentum to get the bell moving. And then your core's job is to abruptly apply the brakes and stop that bell from moving. So it's that resistance against the force that really taxes your obliques the most. Whew. 15 seconds, and then we're gonna change left, right, left, right. Oh. Switching each rep, each side. Oh. Wow, core is tired. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Rest five seconds. We're gonna go left, right, left, right. Three, two, one. Throw left, throw right, throw left, throw right. And just take that extra second at the start of every rep to focus on what part is actually throwing the bell and what's actually stopping the bell. And with a lever, your arms are the lever. So the longer your arms, the more emphasis is gonna be on the point of rotation. And that's your core. 15 seconds. Oh. 12 seconds, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. The chair is coming into play next in 3, 2, 1. Woo! Put your right foot up on the chair, shoulder the weight on your right side, drop your left knee down as low as you can, up and drive right foot. Drop left knee low, up and drive right foot. Oh, that's the one, guys. So we're gonna go right, left, right, left, because we're focusing on the quad and glute. So what we're looking to get here oh, is the right quad and the right glute, because that's my right foot that's on the chair. And the reason I drop my knee, the left knee as low as possible, is because I'm dropping my hips as low as possible then, which means that if I push off the sole of my right foot, I'm getting as much glute and quad as possible in the lift. Rest and change. Left foot on the chair, right foot on the floor, drop the right knee as low as you can, drive through the left foot, crush the chair into the floor like a tin can, and propel yourself upright. We're not pushing off the leg and the foot that's down on the floor. We're focusing on the left leg which is on the chair, crushing that chair into the floor. And then also, postural muscles are doing their secondary role Oh, in keeping you upright, which allows you to transfer energy up through the body and stand tall without buckling. Five seconds and we're changing. Four, three, two, one. Change right hand, right foot up on the chair, dropping the left knee, let's go. Drive off the sole of that right foot. Oh, so we're really focusing on dropping that knee low and then driving through the sole of that right foot. And that heart rate is skyrocketing right now because everything we've done so far has been full body. That means upper and lower, and then the core muscles in between as the border. And everything has to transfer over and back across the border with every rep. 
So it's massively taxing on all systems. Cardio, muscular, skeletal, nervous, everything. Change, left side, left foot up on the chair. Three, two, one, let's go. Drop the knee low, drive off the left foot. So it's like you're coiling that spring down as low as you can and then drive off the left foot. The whole sole of the foot screws into that chair, pushes it down into the floor. So in 25 seconds, we're gonna ditch the bell for a minute, and we're, or three minutes, and we're gonna go into our toe tap push-ups. 15 seconds, so no chair, no bell next. It's all about push-ups and reaching under and touching the left foot with the right hand and then vice versa after every push-up. Four, three, two, one. Ditch the chair, ditch the bell. Ready to go into the plank position and do a push-up. Let's go. Push-up, chest to floor. Squeeze your core, push away with the whole palm. Reach under, touch your left foot with your right hand and repeat after a push-up with the left foot to the right foot, or left hand to the right foot. So with every push-up, you're doing one toe tap. Full range of movement means chest all the way onto the floor. Big squeeze on the core in order to get yourself away from the floor. Reaching under, right hand, touch his left foot. Do a push up and then it's left hand to right foot. Next exercise we're going into, we're gonna isolate right side only. Rest five seconds. So it's one push up, right hand, left foot entirely. Let's go. Push up, right hand, left foot. Back to push up, right hand, left foot. So what I want you to focus on now is using the whole palm of the hand, fingertips, ball of the hand, heel of the hand to push yourself away from the floor. You gotta squeeze your core in order to help because we don't wanna leave our hips behind. The hips in fact are the first thing to leave the floor and the last thing to arrive on the floor. So they spend the least amount of time on the floor. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Rest. We're gonna repeat process, left hand, right foot. Three, two, one, let's go. And again, if you need to, as I've said with every session to date, if you need to scale it back, then all you do is you scale back the resistance, and in this case, it's putting your knees on the floor, then you scale back the tempo, and then only then, if you're still struggling, you stop for a few seconds, and then you pick back up with as little rest as necessary. Just the bare minimum, because we don't want your heart rate to drop, and we don't want the muscles to relax too much while we're taxing them. Woo! And rest. We have one more set. We're gonna go back to alternates now. In three, two, one, let's go. So we're down, chest on floor, squeeze core, push away, right to left, chest on floor, squeeze core, push away, left to right. And we keep that going. And as you get tired, do not let your body start to let those little niggles creep in and those shortcuts take hold. Keep focusing on the correct muscles being used, the whole surface area on the hands pushing away from the floor, the rigidity of the core to keep you in play. Whew. Seven seconds, then we're gonna sit on our bum and we're gonna bring our kettlebell into play. We're gonna do hurdles with the kettlebell. And rest on your back, kettlebell in front, legs out nice and straight, lean back, hurdle over, tip floor, hurdle back, tip floor. And we are very lightly, very slowly, controlling the core and moving the legs. There is no point with core exercises in smashing out reps quickly. The slower you go on the core, the more emphasis you're putting on it, and the better the return. People come along and they absolutely smash out reps. It doesn't get you anything. Go slow on your core. Go fast on your squats if you can. Go fast on your lunges if you can. That's maintain technique. But go slow on core regardless. Rest. Now we're just gonna go right side above the bell and back down. Let's go. Above the bell, back to the right. Above the bell, back to the right. And at all times, you're leaning back very lightly on the hands. The core is engaged at all times. 
you're very lightly tipping the floor with your heels. You're going back up, hovering above the bell, stopping, and then going back down, tipping with the heels on the side. And it's only one side of the core that you're working right now. And in 10 seconds, we're gonna transition to the left. Nice work guys, five seconds, four, three, two, one. We're changing to the side while I just check my notes. Ooh, oh, you're not gonna like the next one. Let's go. So from the left, up to the middle, back down, tip. Up to the middle, back down, tip. Woo! So we're going into alternate overhead press next. Standing. But before every rep, you're gonna extend the bell out in front like you're giving it to someone with two hands. And then you're gonna take it back and then with one arm press it above the head. So it's with two hands out, full extension and back, and then one hand punch above the head. So it's a frontal extension with an overhead press. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Up we get. Grab your bell, hold it with two hands. Extend it out in front, bring it back in, punch it above the head. Extend it out in front, bring it back in, punch it above the head. And keep that going. We are alternating between left and right, and then the next round, we are going to go, oh, the left side. Sorry, the right side. 20 seconds. So again, when you're extending that weight out in front, the body wants to buckle oh, and counterbalance. Don't let it. Really squeeze your core. Keep the arms fully extended out in front of the chest. Three, two, one, rest. Okay, we're gonna go out and back with two hands and then right hand only above the head. Let's go. Out, squeeze core back, right hand above the head. Out, squeeze core back, right hand above the head. And take your time because those shoulders should be absolutely screaming right now. Oh, and that is not the end of the shoulders for today. We're really focusing on hitting the shoulders and the upper back over the next two to three exercises. Whew. So, 10 seconds, and then we're gonna repeat process with the left side. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Whoa. Okay, two hands on the bell. Let's go, extend out and back. In, left side, above the head. And already, that ultimate set that's coming up next is not looking very pretty. Whew. But again, that, oh, ad nauseum technique trumps tempo at all times. So what are we trying to focus on here? We're trying to focus on shoulders, upper middle back, core work, because they're the stabilizers while the shoulders are the movers. Whew. Seven seconds, six, five, four, three, two, one, Whew. shake it out. We're gonna alternate now, out, back, and alternate. Let's go. Out, back, press right. Two hands, out, back, press left. Oh, my shoulders feel like they're on fire. Whew. And it's all about full oh, movement of the muscle. So we are not looking for half ass shoulder press. We're looking for full movement on the muscles because that then stimulates the entire surface area and that then results in the best tone and definition. Don't worry about the weight. As long as you activate the muscle, you're still gonna get re results. <sighs> Doesn't matter how heavy or light you're going, full range of movement is key. And rest, okay. We're going unsupported, lateral raise. Bent over row position, raise the arm out to the right, down, change hands under the torso to the left, down, change hands under the torso to the right, down, change hands to the left. If you need a little bit of help, put your hand on your knee. If you need more help, put your hand on a surface in front of you, like a chair or a table. But at all times, you are really squeezing your shoulder blades together, like you're holding a tennis ball, your feet are flat on the floor, your bum is counterbalancing out the back, oh, and your chest is aggressively pushed forward. We're now focusing on the core and the middle back rest shoulders. Okay, here we go. Right side only. 
Let's go. Shoulders back, chest out, and right side raise. So it's going to take it out of you guys. So you got to really focus on each lift. So you're squeezing the core to take any rotation out of it because rotation equals momentum and momentum, momentum takes the focus off the muscles we're trying to target. Your posture is absolutely perfect. Your shoulders are pinned back. Your stomach muscles are tight. Your feet are flat on the floor. Your butt is pushed out the back and you're aggressively sticking your chest out. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Bell down, change five seconds. Left hand, four, three, two, one. Let's go. So you gotta really squeeze your core as you raise that to the side. If you find any momentum is coming in like a rotation and you can't fix it by squeezing your stomach, then what you gotta do is put your hand on a surface like a chair and that should help isolate that shoulder and help your core work as well. So again, it's all about targeting the rear portion of the shoulder, up into the shoulder blade, middle upper back, and also core. And rest. We have one more round. Wow. We're alternating between left and right. Let's go. So again, one to the right, change under the body, one to the left. And think of it as in you're in a full body cast, from your neck to your ankles, and the only part of your body that's free is your shoulders down to your fingertips to move. Everything else is absolutely frozen in position. And inside you're screaming, but on the outside it looks like you are just deadpan solid, holding yourself rigid. Whew. So after this, we're going into bridging. Oh, we're gonna go flat onto our backs now. Flat onto your backs. Whew. Hold onto the legs of that chair. Drive your left heel into the chair and up. And then change right heel into the chair and up. Do not rush this. Emphasis on dropping the heel or the hip, sorry, the hip, the butt as low as possible. And then driving through the heel. Do not do a quick change at the bottom because that generates momentum. And momentum is what takes the focus away from the hamstrings and glutes. Whew, it's a muggy one today, sweaty. So take that extra second at the bottom to get the other leg up into the air. It's not pushing into the air. It's literally locked rest in position while the other leg on the chair is doing the lifting. Left leg on the chair, let's go. Drop hips low, drive left heel. Drop hips low, drive left heel. And we are not bending or moving the right leg in any way, shape or form. As far as you're concerned, you only have one leg for the duration of this exercise, and that's your left. You're digging through the left heel, you're hammering into the hamstrings and the butt cheeks at the top, left side. You will feel a little bit of tension creep into the lower back on the left side. That's because that left glute cheek is really struggling to get as many friends to help as possible, and it's pulling down on the lower back. Whew. Change, right leg in three, left leg high in the air, two, one, let's go. So remember guys, we don't want momentum here. We want to really focus statically on our hamstring and our glute. And by momentum, I mean throwing your leg forward in order to generate that swing to get your hips off the floor. You don't want that. We want to really target that right hamstring and right butt cheek, driving it off the floor. 15 seconds, and then we're going into alternates. And you guys are almost home. We are inside the last 10 minutes at this stage. Oh, keep moving. This session is absolutely flying by. Whew, and change. We're going to alternates now. And remember, slow is pro, let's go. So we have a 40 second window, and you should be doing one rep every three to four seconds. So we're probably talking between 10 and 12 reps in that 40 second window. That is plenty and you will still get a massive cardio burn, you'll still get a really high heart rate because you are targeting each muscle 100% and it requires massive amounts of attention from the blood flow. And blood flow equals cardio 
oh, work to beat the band. You gotta oxygenate the blood and you gotta pump it. Three seconds, we're up. We're gonna sit onto the chair. Let's go. Up we get. Sit on chair. Lift your left leg in the air. Push through the right foot up. Sitting back down on the right foot, change. So we're pistol squatting, alternating. Bonus points for not letting your foot touch the floor until you are back down on the chair again. And we are pushing wholly through the sole of the foot. And we are focusing, as with a two foot squat, on unlocking through the hips and dropping the hips. Because we have that safety net of the chair beneath us. And if I was to take the chair out of the equation, oh, we'd all automatically start bending through our knees as opposed to our hips, because subconsciously you freak out. Rest. So we're gonna keep our left leg in the air, and we're gonna drive off the right leg only. Let's go. Push through the sole of that right foot. Leg stays, left leg stays off the floor as you lower yourself back down to the chair. Try and control the descent fully to the chair. Use your arms out in front as your balance pull. Don't just drop onto that chair. And remember, it's behind you. So stick your ass out as you drop. If you consciously just break through the knee and don't stick your ass out, you're gonna hurt your knee. So really stick the ass out and sit down. Six seconds, five, four, three, two, one. Back down onto that chair, right leg in the air, two, one. Push through right foot. Stick ass out, sit ass down, under control. It's all about control. You have to be a control freak when you're doing remote sessions like this because there isn't someone like me standing over you saying, pin your shoulder blades. I can see your hips up. Keep focusing on the muscles that you need to use as per my instructions and be rigid. Slow it down. Push through the whole sole of your left foot, stand tall. Stick your ass out, sit down through the hips. Don't sit down through the knee. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Shake it out, we got one more round. We're gonna alternate between left and right. Three, two, one, let's go. Push off the right, drop on the right. Push off the left, drop on the left. Don't worry if you need some support beside you, that's fine. And by support I mean a solid surface, not a child going, yeah, you can do it. Although it's always good for the ego. So remember, it's all about whole sole of the foot corkscrewing into the floor. Imagine you're doing a two-legged squat and you're just looking, in this occasion, on the one of the legs. Whew. So in 10 seconds, we're going to unsupported bent over row. Oh. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. And back to your bell, get rid of that chair. Right hand, left hand, shoulders back, chest out. Pull, release, change. Pull, release, change. And you are not letting any other part of your body move apart from the shoulder tip to the fingertip. Everything else is rigid. Your feet are flat on the floor, suction cupped onto the floor. Your knees are slightly bent. Your butt is pushed as far out behind you as you can. Your nose is pushed as far forward as possible. So your bum and your nose are getting as far away from each other as possible. Your chest is rammed forward. Your shoulder blades are reefed back and your stomach is tight. And rest. Woo. We're gonna go right side only. Big core work here. Let's go. So we're pulling right side only and you are preempting every pull on the right side with a squeeze of the core. Consciously squeeze your core as you're driving the bell up towards your shoulder. If you need support at this stage, put your hand very lightly on a surface in front. Otherwise, keep going and the emphasis on the stomach and the back have to be that chair or table in front. Do not let the bell pull your shoulders off parallel with the floor. Seven seconds, six, five, four, keep squeezing that core. Three, two, one, rest. Wow, shake it out. Hamstrings, core, glutes burning. And let's go, left side. Whoa. So, again, focusing on big squeeze on the stomach with every rep. Shoulders pulled back, chest pushed forward, soles of the feet on the floor, 
bum pushed as far out behind you as you can, nose pushed as far forward as possible, and you're not letting your shoulders move off parallel with the floor. 15 seconds, your hamstrings, your glutes, your lower middle back is all screaming right now, but do not let it fail. Four, three, two, one, rest, wow. Okay, alternating between left and right. <sighs> Dizzy. Let's go. So it's right side pull, down, change. Left side pull, down, change. And the worst part of me right now is the weakest part. And that's my lowest back, lower back, which is starting to get tight. So I just take that extra second to let go of the weight, stand up, reset my posture, and then go again. With that perfect technique, and if at any point, Technique starts to fail, stand, loosen out, reset, go again. And that stand, loosen out, should take no more than two to three seconds max. Woo, three seconds, two, one, last exercise, here we go. Right hand on the bell, feet together, squeeze stomach, curl to the shoulder, punch to the sky, back down, finish the curl. Curl to the shoulder, punch to the sky, back down, finish the curl. Whew. So we're getting the guns. So what we're gonna get here is left or right side, left side on the lame curl, and then it's gonna be right side staggered push-up, left side staggered push-up to hit the triceps, and shoulders and chest. Whew. 11 seconds, 10 seconds, what's that? Sun's out, guns out. So we're isolating the bicep with the curl, and then we're going into the shoulder. Three, two, one. Change, left hand. Hand behind the back to ensure posture is correct and stomach is used, being used. Curl up, squeeze core, punch up, lower down, curl down. Curl up, punch up, lower down, curl down. Use your elbow as a point of reference. So we're gonna lower down once the elbow is against the ribs. And you're gonna higher up while maintaining the elbow against the ribs. And that's also gonna come into effect on the next exercise, which is gonna be tricep push-ups, where we scrape our ribs with our elbow, but we're gonna stagger the height. We're gonna put one hand on a pile of, uh, the bell, or a pile of books, or something similar. Okay, bell on floor. We're gonna put our hand on top of the bell on the right side. We're gonna put our left hand on the floor, and we're doing tricep push-ups, where we're scraping our elbows past our ribs in order to hit those triceps as much as possible. If you need to use the knees on the floor, by all means. Your hips are not allowed to touch the floor. Okay, your hips are not allowed to touch the floor. And I want you to take that instruction and really focus on it. Chest gets lower than hips, and hips are not allowed to touch the floor. Doesn't mean they can't stop a millimeter off the floor, but they're just not allowed to rest on it. Five seconds, four, three, two, one, change. Left hand on the bell, right hand on the floor, and again, the elbow stays as close to the ribs as possible. Keep her going, last 40 seconds, guys. This is it. And as you do your push-up, you're focusing on keeping the elbows rigid, to, or the elbows rigid to the ribs, and we're pushing to the whole palm of the hand on both the bell and the floor. And your hips are not allowed near that floor, more than a centimeter. Oh, we have 12 seconds left in today's workout. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And rest. Whew. Was it just me or did that fly by? Oh, that was 39 minutes. Solid, with five seconds break every 40 seconds. And by five seconds break, hey Sebastian, six pack. The only six pack I have at the moment is in the fridge. Whoa. So, oh, my heart rate is up, and I didn't move off the spot. And I didn't do any burpees, man maker burpees, regular burpees, double take burpees. I didn't do anything like that. But that heart rate is still pounding because I've used all the muscles in the system I focused on them working individually and collectively. All the blood is being sent there, and as a result, my heart rate and my lungs have to work overtime. 
to remove the toxins, lactic acid and CO2, and also reoxygenate the blood. So you get a serious cardio workout there. And there's a high heart rate as well still. Okay guys, so you're very welcome guys. Those hurdles are really hard. Yeah, they were hard because you're really isolating your lower core, your upper core and your obliques. So you're leaning back to get the upper core. You're raising the legs, which hits the lower core. And then you're getting a rotation, which hits the obliques. So they are massive um, on the, 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 the core, Susie. Okay, so we're just gonna go into a passive hang. Feet nice and wide. Just like yesterday, soft knees, put all the weight on your heels, push your butt out the back, and just drop those hands to the floor. I'm a big believer in just going as passive as possible in your stretches and your cool down. Just let the body hang and get as many muscles as possible stretched out while we do. So I'm like, I'm trying to hit my groin here, my hamstrings, my lower back, my um, shoulder blades, and my shoulders. And by stretching out your hamstrings, your groin, and your lower back, you're taking the pressure off your glutes, which then allows the glutes to relax and therefore doesn't result in spasms. And if you get a spasm on your glutes, you're gonna feel it on your lower back and your hamstrings more times than none. And people start to freak out thinking they have a hamstring or a back problem. Nine times out of 10, it's the glutes. Whew. Okay, so we're gonna stretch out those glutes now. So if you just grab your chair, put your chair in front of your left foot, and then you're gonna bring your right foot over onto it. So essentially your right foot is across your body now, almost like you're putting your foot across your knee. And then you're gonna stick your ass out behind you and push that knee down. And you're gonna feel that on the outside of the ass pocket area. So the sole of your foot is flat on the floor. Your butt is pushed out the back. Your knee is falling out to the side with a little help from your elbow or your hand. You're leaning forward and you're feeling a stretch from the outside of your butt cheek into your hamstring down below or into your lower back above or both. In through nose, exhale and go passive. Think ragdoll, just sink into that stretch. So these two stretches I've done so far are perfect for alleviating any tight back, tight hamstring and glutes. So you can hold each of these stretches for two to three minutes in front of the TV, pre-run, post-run, and it will make a massive difference. So change sides if you haven't already. So we got a request from, I think it was Susie last week, asking what exercises could you do in order to alleviate tension on the lower back. So the first thing is switch off your hamstrings, your glutes, your groin by doing that passive hang we did just a few seconds ago, and then go into the, the specific area of the glutes, which we're doing now. So a glute is the medial glute, the outside of the hips. So again, foot across the body, drop yourself down into it, lean forward and stretch it out. If you want, you can hold this for two to three minutes even. And then the next one we're going into now is your hip flexor. Interlock your fingers, put your hands behind your head, take a big stride forward, drop your knee onto the floor. And then just let your hip fall forward. And as your hip fall forward, try and relax that glute on the leg that's in front. Because the more you relax the glute, the more the hips can sink forward. Because the glutes are designed to pull your hips back and the hips are designed to pull your hips forward. So if you can relax your glute, it just lets the hips uh, fall forward and stretches out the hip flexor a little bit more. Relax, relax, relax through the shoulder blades. Again, two minutes in this stretch if you're doing it at home. And then we're gonna change other side, left foot out in front, and just let those hips sink forward. So again, I've just spent a little bit more time on the cool down stretches today, because I wanna focus on some of the areas where people have raised questions. So it just gives you an example. If you have a question, guys, hit me with it. Send us a direct message on Twitter, on Facebook, on email, info at tonefit.com, and we will get around to answering it. It may not be immediately, but we will get around to answering it. So again, relaxing through the shoulder blades, relaxing that glute cheek. And then we're gonna stand up. We're gonna drop our right hand down or back in between our shoulder blade, left on the elbow and pull to the left, stretching out that right side, holding it there for five more seconds. Four, three, two, one, and change. Left in between, right hand on top, pull to the right. Whew. So today, Tuesday, session 62, 13 exercises, four rounds on each, 39 minutes solid, that flew by. So I'll have to keep that format going for the next few weeks. So guys, I will see you for session 63 tomorrow, uh, which is Wednesday. We're gonna get an extra bit of work done on our waistline, our waistline Wednesday, our core. So until then, go eat some food, have a shower, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a good one.